Hi, I'm Jenna Carvana. And I'm Rebecca Long. And we want to welcome you to El Greco, Ambition and Defiance. But I don't think any of the studies of El Greco have really done justice to the artist that he was, the level of ambition that he had. In this exhibition, we've brought together works that will take you from the very beginning of El Greco's career, when he was an icon painter on Crete. And we'll see how he carves out a niche for himself ultimately in Toledo. To get there, he had to maneuver through payments and systems and patronage. Getting into an actual legal battle over the payment for his works. And this had to do both with his stubbornness and also with the system that was in place for how artists were paid. Because he still needed to maintain a workshop and maintain a career and bring money in while he was engaged in these battles, he turned to the private market as a supplement to the commissions that he was getting for major altarpieces. My name is uh, Richard Kagan. I'm a professor emeritus at Johns Hopkins University. For many wealthy Toledans, El Greco was the artist they wanted. And so it's like going out and getting a Louis Vuitton or a Gucci. Perhaps it gave a measure of cachet to the individual who commissioned it. There's something very contemporary even about the struggles that he went through in his career and his personality. We know a lot more about El Greco than we do other artists of the period, thanks to all the records of the trials and lawsuits and everything else. We really have a sense of him as a person and of, of what he wanted for his career. And they're the same basic struggles that anyone who's trying to make it as an artist faces even though it was 400 years ago.